you don't realize how valuable oxygen is until it's gone. Mm. So gratitude is the quickest way to happiness, meaning gratitude is a reflection on what already is, not what is going to be. So when you pause and think, I'm so grateful for my right toe, because have you ever stubbed your toe and how it affected your whole body? <laughs> well, you won't know that until the toe gets hurt. You know, or close your eyes for a second and you can't see and you have to go around the whole day. And you realize, well, I'm so grateful for my eyes. That when you start from gratitude, you get power to tackle anything else. So gratitude doesn't even have to be fake in it. Amos Medra. Action Jackson, uh, UK ambassador for happiness. So much more. I've been trying to get hold of you for so long. I'm just so happy that you're here today. Uh, wow, this is something I've been looking forward to. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really pleased to have you here. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. It's a pleasure to uh, connect with you. It's, it's wonderful. It's a um, great day to be alive. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, your story is remarkable. You know, you're, you're someone who's just full of energy, full of joy. God knows how many marathons you've done, your bike <laughs> rides to Bristol and, you know, you've released music. <laughs> you've constantly in schools. You've got ambassadors all over the world, not just the UK. We're talking Dubai, India, all over Africa. Wow. The US. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's just so many, so many things that you've done. You know, where do you get this energy from and where, you know, why do you do what you do? Wow. Um, it's it's far, often people ask me, where do I get that energy from? And even I'm always asking myself, where do I get the energy from? Um, because here's the, here's the one that I heard someone say this I, and, and it was like, I don't get my energy from anywhere because I am energy. Because when you rely on an external source to get your energy, what if that source runs out? And what human beings don't realize that is this, we are a walking energy. We are a walking source. Apparently there's enough energy rotating in our body to light up a light bulb. So you, ha you only have to look at someone funny, change their countenance and you know you've got energy. So where I get it from, is by directing it to the desire to give life to whoever and whatever. And that desire switches on my lights. Um, but if I want to take light, I shut down my light. So it comes from purpose. And the reason why I do what I do is I really believe that we are duty bound to create a world where our young people wake up happy and go to bed fulfilled. And us all, we have to make sure that we made it happen. Incredible. What a wonderful answer that is. I think I could listen to that on repeat. <laughs> Were you always this type of person? What was the young, the young, you know, Jackson Ogunyemi like? You know, were you uh, purposeful? Were you somebody that felt that you had a mission, something to do? Do you know you're born and you just go about life and certain things tug at you? And that's what happens. Certain things tug at you and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I like, I'm, I'm loving drama. I like art. I really don't like maths and English. I'll do it. But there were certain things that was tugging at me. People tugged at me. And I think this is why it's so important to teach our young people to pay attention to their likes and their dislikes. And, and, and for me growing up, it was so beautiful to be able to understand that I love the arts. And I thought it was all about being famous and being an actor. But as I grew older, I realized that everyone's given a gift and a skill for a purpose. It's not for us to get on and be popular. Your gift is actually for purpose, not popularity. And when you walk in your purpose, you might become popular and you might not be, be, become popular. That's okay. But at least you're fulfilling purpose. I'd rather fulfill purpose than be popular. Absolutely. Uh, you know, waking up with, you know, a purpose and mission driven and wanting to do something, you know, um, Talk to us about, you know, some of the dark days and, you know, because I know sometimes you hear people say in their weakness and in their pain is where they found their strength. You know, mm. talk to us about some of those days and, you know, how it made you perhaps the person that you are today. Yeah, I think, you know, what was actually great was having a foundation. So growing up, having a foundation of love and of gratitude and of positivity, love, gratitude, posit positivity was a solid foundation. So when the dark days came, they didn't really sink me as much. 
because I was able to stand on that foundation. Yeah, it weigh you down a little. Imagine this, you've got this heavy weight on your shoulder, but you're standing on sinking sand. So it's going to really bury you. But if you have the same weight on your shoulder, but you're standing on concrete, you're able to still exert the force back up. And for me, the foundation was love, was understanding that it's not me carrying the weight of life, that I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. And I often pray and say, God, you've put me on this planet. Give me the solution to this challenge. And I really do believe with a lot of us, my identity is not in the problem. My identity is in the one who put me on this planet. So it kind of gives me a better sense of direction that whatever's happening with either business or relationships, because I've been through relationships ups and down, I'm not in that. Okay. And it's hard to sort of separate the two. And that's really been able to help me through the dark times, as it were, to understand that I'm going through this, but I am not this. I'm going through this. I am not this. Yeah, absolutely. And I like what you spoke there about the gratitude. And I think sometimes it's difficult to, you know, find reasons to be grateful. But for the fact that, you know, you've taken breath, you're alive. Uh, those are reasons to be grateful. Um, you know, could you fake it until you make it? Because sometimes we're so lost in our own world. But to fake that gratitude until it becomes real, does that work? Well, gratitude is something that it's like you 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 don't realize how valuable oxygen is until it's gone. Hmm. So gratitude is the quickest way to happiness, meaning gratitude is a reflection on what already is, not what is going to be. So when you pause and think, I'm so grateful for my right toe. Because have you ever stubbed your toe and how it affected your whole body? <laughs> well, you won't know that until the toe gets hurt. You know, or close your eyes for a second and you can't see and you have to go around the whole day. Then you realize, well, I'm so grateful for my eyes. That when you start from gratitude, you get power to tackle anything else. So gratitude doesn't even have to be faking it. Gratitude, like for me, for instance, I've got this flower in my office, okay? And my wife threw away the whole bunch. And I thought, oh, let me, let me save this too. And I put them in just like a bottle like this. And they've been blossoming. And I'm just so grateful for nature and the beauty of nature. This warms my heart, makes me feel good. I'm grateful for, for tangerine. The color and the taste is there. And by the time I've done that, my heart fills with energy and I'm able to tackle whatever's in front of me. So anyone that's going through anything in life, for a second, shut up for a second, not you, the voice in your head, shut up for a second, look for five things to be grateful for, then tackle the problem. You realise that you're able to tackle the problem with a lot more energy. Yeah, absolutely. And do, do you think it's the older that we get that we start to reflect a bit more um, and become a bit more grateful for things? And I think we're trying to encourage young people to do this, but I think because of the peer pressure and the surroundings, just having that moment alone seems weird to them. Yeah, I mean, young people are always, they're, they're very riveted in the, in the moment, here and now, what I want, what I want, what I want, and what I don't have, what I want, what I don't have, what I want, what I don't have, what I want. And that's all void, void. I don't have it, I want this, zero, versus I've got this. Um, and I think, yeah, the older you get, and even, you know what, some adults are guilty of stressing about life and they forgot how far they've come. I often say to leaders when I work with educators to don't just focus on the trophy, uh, the, the, the scorecard. You need to focus on the trophy cabinet as well. Because if you keep looking at the scorecard, it's always going to be what's next, what's next. Whereas your trophy cabinet tells you where you have come from. So I think we are all guilty to a degree of not pausing and be grateful. Um, it's funny, we have a history of the things we haven't done but we are not looking at the history of the things that we have done. And that might just help us. Yeah, absolutely. Celebrate every win, even the small wins. Yes. Now, this might contradict that statement a little bit here. <laughs> you know, you hear about eighth place trophies. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Is that something that's worth celebrating? Should we reward young people with eighth place trophies? Yeah, I mean, I've heard so many things about that. I'm a great believer in growth and progress. So if you're rewarding someone for their own progress, because you can't compete with people, 
because we're all different. We're on different paths. In sports, yes, we know, right? If you score, you win. That's it. Eighth place trophy. It's a hard one because in life, it's a different matrix in life. In sport, please don't give eighth place trophies in sports because it's, it's, it's training you to say, right, it's okay for me to just lay back and I'll get the trophy, okay? But in life itself, you measure against your own progress where you compare to where you're supposed to be. So when it comes to our young people, we should challenge them, we should push them, we must, but we must also let them know that their identity is not in the trophy. The identity is in their effort that they're putting in. So I might be believe in trophies and stuff, yes, to an extent, and to an extent, I don't want us to tie our life on it because society now makes us feel inadequate if we're not number one on the Forbes list. Whereas if you are actually 500 on the Forbes list, you can actually be happy for the rest of your life. So stop comparing your chapter one with somebody else's chapter 50. Mm. It's only going to create depression. You are not like them. They started somewhere. So let's all run our own race in our own lane for the purpose of why we've been put on this planet. That is so good. <laughs> oh, I knew this interview is going to be something else. That is so good. You know, you've been able to take a product and quantify that product, but in quantifying it, you still produce that really good quality one-to-one. -one. It's like you're directing that message specifically to somebody. How do you do that? How have you managed to get that balance right to get your products right across the globe? But yet when you speak, it's as though you're speaking to that one individual. <laughs> uh, one love. <laughs> One life, let's get together and feel all right. It's all about the love. You walk into the room, I'm here to, my intention is to bring love. From the receptionist at the hotel, to the taxi driver, to the person I see at the gate, it's all love. So when you, number one, give yourself that love and you carry that intention, that intention drives you. That intention says, oh, there's a human being. Show them love. How? Wave, smile, compliment them. Okay, next. So it's not until you get to an event. If you are consistently, perpetually in that love mode, you constantly give it. Even when you don't feel like giving it, you're giving it. Um, so for me, the essence is the intention to give love no matter what. Well, first giving love to myself. And from the overflow of the love I've given to myself, it just emanates out to the world. And I love my team. Mwah. and when they walk away with that love wherever they are they just keep giving it's in everyone we just have to tease it out yeah and 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 would you say that's the foundation of your business that's how everything is established on is on that love and from there's where you build you've built your empire well so the empire is built on four principles love integrity fun and excellence L-I-F-E is built on life, love, integrity, fun, and excellence. And that's what's been keeping me going for the last 25 years. That's incredible. And what can we expect in the future? What's Action Jackson up to? Well, we're going into theatre and film. And uh, my dream has always been to use the arts and the entertainment to reach people's minds. So in the coming future, you're going to be seeing plays come out. You're going to be seeing films come out, short films, because I really believe that's a quick way to actually impact the mind. So I'm um, tapping into my dream that I've always wanted to become an actor, to use that to create a world where young people wake up happy and go to bed fulfilled. Absolutely incredible. And, you know, we'll be celebrated and uh, looking forward to that as soon as it gets here. Please do let us know. How can the audience connect with you? Uh, what, what's uh, We know you're on Twitter. That's your yes. main um, source. Um, and of course, there's a website as well. Yeah. So I'm on Twitter at Action Jackson and on Instagram, Action Jackson Live. And then it's actionjacksonlive.com, uh, the website. Fantastic. Wow. Action Jackson. What a guy. What a man. You know, you're so uh, passionate about what you do. You love your enthusiasm. And I love that, you know, uh, life, uh, you know, uh, acronym that you you gave us there, you know, and that, imagine if we all took that and 
apply that to what we do, the things that we could achieve. You know, you hear about recessions and doom and gloom, but it's about how you take that in and how you perceive it. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom. You know, uh, in the thir- 1930s, when people were uh, being laid off and there was uh, the economic downturn, there were people prospering. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've uh, proven to us that it's all within yourself. You don't need to look externally. Just look within yourself and you'll find all the good that you ever desire there. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for what you're doing for the community, the country and the world. If you want some amazing inspiration, check out the videos next to me and I'll see you right there.